Hello everyone, welcome back to our series on urban energy modeling with Dragonfly. Uh, and now in the previous videos we covered the various different ways that you can create Dragonfly models. We covered uh, the process for simulating a Dragonfly model and, and importing some of those results. Uh, and so now in the remainder of the series we're going to cover different types of uh, uh, workflows that are specific to uh, the urban scale and to uh, the urban opt engine that we're using under the hood uh, of uh, of our energy simulation processes in Dragonfly. So I've uh, opened up the same model that we created at the end of a, of a, a video uh, 11, where we uh, essentially took this this building from footprints, uh, created a Dragonfly model from that, exported it to GeoJSON, and ran it through uh, through Energy Plus using the UrbanOpt uh, CLI. I've reopened this file uh, because I, I want to show a few other things that we can do with these results uh, and do with the simulation uh, with, with, the, with the power of UrbanOpt that we have here. Uh, and in particular, I want to explore, I'm going to make Grasshopper larger here. I want to explore some of these other inputs that we have on the actual component that runs the UrbanOpt simulation. Uh, so we made use of the, you know, obviously the GeoJSON is what really contains the definition of our models and all the properties of that model. Uh, and we know what EPW files are. We know what the simulation parameters those dictate, uh, you know, the type of simulation we want to run and the outputs that we get. Uh, but two things that we didn't get the chance to cover were these measures and uh, this particularly uh, useful uh, input for this component called a mapper. Uh, and so... Those of you who watched our, our Honeybee Energy series end-to-end -end, know how, uh, how to apply measures to your model. Uh, and measures, for any of you who, who aren't familiar with them, are really just snippets of, of code written with the OpenStudio SDK uh, that allow you essentially to customize your energy simulation model in whatever way you want. All the features practically, I mean, or I should say most of the features of Energy Plus are available uh, by writing a measure uh, essentially, and by loading it up into Grasshopper and applying it to your simulation. Uh, and so this measured input is meant to do just that. It's meant to be able to take those those measures, those scripts uh, that people have written, uh, and uh, apply those to your simulation as part of the export process. Uh, and uh, so we're actually going to use a measure today, but uh, but we're actually going to use it in a very special way. So uh, if you guys had, had looked at our sample files, if you'd gone to our, our repo of samples, uh, and then into the the Dragonfly subfolder of, of our of our samples repo here, uh, you probably see that we actually sh have uh, uh, shipped the samples with a measure with them. Uh, and specifically, there's a measure that uh, that Enroll maintains here, uh, the National Renewable Energy Lab, that allows you to add electrical vehicle loads into your into your energy simulations. Uh, and so these are particularly important, especially you can imagine on the urban scale where we are uh, really trying to account for how this set of buildings we have here will interact with the electrical grid and how we can optimize the balance between uh, you know, what the buildings are drawing and what the grid is able to supply. Uh, accounting for electrical vehicles, which are probably only set to continue to grow in the coming decade, uh, that ends up being really important for those types of studies. So we're actually going to load this measure up into uh, Grasshopper in this video and apply it as part of our urban op simulation. So uh, if you guys downloaded the files, you will see that um, that we have a, a you know that add EV load uh, measure is right here. So once you guys uh, open up that folder that that, uh, that says add EV load, once you downloaded and opened it. Uh, you can see the measure is really just this Ruby script. This is the actual code that is uh, that is going to be executed. Um, and there are a few other things that, that come with a measure, some resources, some tests. I mean, this is really the heart of what we need. Uh, but I'm going to copy the path to this entire folder. Essentially, you just need the path to, to the measure folder on your machine. If you go and you right-click and copy that to your clipboard, uh, I'm going to bring this into Grasshopper right now. All right, let's... That's, uh, I'm going to work just below the urban op component here of, of the, the grasshopper definition we built back in video 11. Uh, okay, and I'm going to double click the canvas, type double quote, and paste in that path to, uh, to that, that file path to the measure, that add EV load uh, folder. Uh, and you'll see if we uh, look under Honeybee Energy, there is a component that can load up this measure uh, and, uh, and uh, basically allow you to assign that to your model. Uh, if I were to do this right uh, and copy this HP load measures component onto my canvas, 
uh, I connect up the measure path here. You'll see as soon as you connect up a measure path to that component, it's going to load all of the input arguments. The component's going to transform so that you can actually specify what the, the inputs of this, this script uh, using the OpenCDU SDK, uh, specify what, what things you want to, to do for those, uh, to apply for those, uh, what, what inputs you want to apply to your simulation. Uh, and you can see this add EV load measure. There are different options for the delay type. Um, and if you hover over it, it'll give you a little bit of a description of what that is uh, and what the options are. There's charging behavior. And this looks like something that I probably want to change, uh, you know, whether it's a business as usual. Uh, actually, you know what? Business as usual sounds good for this case. I think it's charging station type. This is probably pretty important. You want to select a typical home, typical public, or typical work. And I imagine actually each building in my uh, district here, my sample district is probably going to have a different behavior. Uh, but let's put a pin in that. We'll come right back to that. Um, the important thing I guys, I want you guys to realize is that out of this component, you're getting a measure object. And this measure object can be plugged into the measures input of the urban opt component, just as you would uh, for, for uh, you know, simulation directly with OpenStudio. You can apply measures uh, to your model this way. Now, the very important thing to be aware of is that when you want to apply in a measure using this Honeybee component, this HP load measure component, and this measure's input, it is going to apply, basically when you export to UrbanOp, it will apply this measure to each and every building in your model, right? So the, if I were to apply this measure right now, I'm assuming that all of the charging behaviors are typical public for every single building that I have here. Uh, and chances are a lot of the times that you may want to apply a different uh, value for a different building in your model. Uh, and so that's where this mappers input comes into play here. So actually, I'm not, I'm not going to use this load measures component in, in this particular workflow uh, because I actually want to make use of this. This mappers input is also set to take a, a, a you know, form of a measure. Uh, but a, a mapper specifically, it's a urban opt specific type of input where you can actually specify different input arguments for different buildings of your model. That's really the only difference between a mapper and a measure, uh, right? And measures, you know, measures are, are open studio native things. Mappers are specific to urban opt into these studies where you're running multiple buildings at once. So, all right, if I actually go over to Dragonfly, because mappers are only uh, applicable to uh, your urban scale models and urban op models. Uh, I'm going to drag and drop this DF load mapper measure component onto the canvas here. Okay, and you'll see it actually looks a lot like the honeybee component that we uh, we just uh, dropped on the canvas. The key difference with between this load mapper measure component and the previous one though is that you can plug in lists of values for the measure arguments. So all right, let's see how this actually works in practice. So if I go and I connect up our add EV load uh, measure to this component, you'll see that if I want us to assign a different charging station type based on uh, the, the various different buildings that I have in my model, I can plug in a list of input arguments here uh, and be able to, um, yeah, essentially make a, apply the measure to my model in a way that, uh, that makes sense for the various different types of buildings that I have. And that would be really important for my model here because if you guys remember, right, this model has all these different types. We have mid-rise apartments, we have malls and outpatients and medium offices, uh, right? There are different, various different types of programs and I'm sure various types of charging behaviors uh, that we want to assign to a model like this. So, all right, so let's go about this. Maybe first I'll just show like our, our energy vehicle charging percent. Uh, right now you can see this is a value from zero to 100. Uh, and uh, the, the fault is just 1%. And I know we, we, I think we've already passed this in the US. We're close to 2% now of vehicles being EVs. Uh, let's really model, though, like, you know, the scenario in 10 years. Like, if, you know, if we're really interested in designing like grid interactive uh, infrastructure, uh, let's sub do something like 50% uh, energy, you know, electric vehicle charging. Um, so, all right. So that means basically we're, we're, we're going to be using, uh, you know, the amount of, of vehicles that are plugging in to charge uh, on these buildings is going to be about half of all the, the vehicles uh, that you'd expect for these buildings. And now let's actually plug in something that makes sense for the, for the charging station type. So let me go back and actually see uh, what types of buildings I have here. Because I remember that we named our buildings with uh, roughly with their, their usage. 
Yeah, so we can kind of make sure we can see that our first building is residential, the next one is a mall, and that's followed by another residential mixed use. So let me see. Our options for being able to uh, uh, set up our charging station type are typical home, typical public, and typical work. I think actually I might want to make use of all three of these between our building programs. So I'm just going to put inside a panel, though, uh, what do we say, typical home. That should be one of the acceptable arguments. Is that right? Yeah. And uh, I'm going to make this multi-line data because I also really want to make a list that aligns with our buildings. So I'm going to right-click on the panel and say multi-line data. And what else do we have here? So typical public is the other option. Uh, I'm going to hit enter and type typical public. Uh, and then the last one I think was typical work. All right, so these are the three types that we have to work with here. And so I'm going to drag so this this uh, you know these uh, multi-line data panel with three options. I'm going to drag over to be next to my buildings here, so that I can actually try and make something that I know aligns with the with how these buildings are set up. So all right, let's make this a little larger like this. I'm going to double click this here. And so the first one should be typical home. I think that makes sense. A mall that sounds like it should be typical public. But if the, you know, if the next building is another residential building, I'm going to copy typical home to that slot. Uh, mixed use, that sounds like it should be typical public, maybe. Um, see, hospital could be a typical public. Uh, you know, I'll make both the hospitals typical public. And office, though, that should be typical work. That, I think that's pretty clear. That should be typical work. Uh, and then all the residential buildings, let's see, we got four residential buildings that fall in this. So one, two, three, four. Just pasting that typical home. Uh, and then I think the last two, maybe, yeah, we can just do typical public for those two. All right. So now I think I have a list of, you know, those those measure input arguments that should align with the, the types of buildings I have here. If I click out of this, right, I, yeah, I should have 12 values here that correspond with the 12 values, uh, you know, the 12 different types of buildings that I have here. And now the beautiful part of mapper measures is that instead of just plugging in a single value like what we did for EV percent, I can go and plug in this whole list of, uh, of values that I know is meant to align with the buildings of our model. Okay, all right, great. And so we have, we're getting out of this component, we're getting this, this uh, mapper measure object, and this mapper measure can go straight into the, into the mapper's uh, input of, uh, of, our, of our run urban op simulation. Uh, and so I'm going to run this simulation just so you guys understand, uh, you know, what exactly this measure is doing, because it's actually NREL is maintaining this this particular add EV load measure. Uh, I'll make sure that you have a link specifically to uh, the the latest version of this me measure where uh, where NREL should be maintaining them. I should I should include that in the description. Uh, but yeah, but essentially you'll see if you read the component here, the, it'll tell you that the it adds EV loads and they'll get added to the uh, exterior equipment essentially of the model um, and it will you know the resulting we should be able to see actually the, the EV load profiles in the EUI output that we get here at the end so I'm just gonna you know I'm gonna bring up my task manager just so that we can actually see uh, you know make sure that the simulation is running and I'm gonna fast forward through this next part uh, but just so you guys can see the output here that we get from the from the resulting simulation so I'll see you on the other side Okay, so I believe our simulation has finished. Uh, and just to show you guys uh, what the, what this uh, measure actually did, this particular measure did in our case, uh, you can actually see under the EUI, as I uh, was was uh, uh, mentioning uh, would be the case, we actually have electric vehicles now showing up uh, under under our EUI outputs, and we can now uh, be able to put this in perspective of the rest of the loads of the building. Uh, curiously enough, this is a lot less than I'd, I'd uh, kind of expected. It's still we're still using more energy for things like cooling uh, uh, these buildings uh, than we are to charging the vehicles. Uh, again, this is only 50%, so maybe it'd be a little different if we did uh, a full 100%. Uh, but at least you guys get a sense. I mean, this is just one measure. There's a whole slew of measures that uh, that NREL maintains uh, that will do various different types of uh, operations on your building, whether that's putting in certain HVAC systems or accounting for other types of, uh, of, of attributes of your model. 
Uh, okay. I mean, maybe I'll just say, so you guys will notice I, I still have the same uh, monthly plot visualization that we had in our uh, first video. Uh, and the electric vehicles aren't showing up on here, but you can get those uh, probably by just making sure that you re request the electric vehicles, uh, the exterior equipment object uh, from the simulation. So the way that you figure this out is that you can actually use these RDD outputs uh, to, to go and figure out exactly which, I, I know it's called exterior equipment, but essentially what you do, here we go. I'm just gonna grab one of these uh, RDD files with the list item. Uh, and just show you how you can quickly search to if you do want to integrate the uh, the electric vehicles into this part of the simulation. So I know it's called exterior uh, equipment. And I think if I plug this into here, we should get some of the we should get the exact name of the output that you need. Yeah, okay, this one of one of these looks correct. Uh, so yeah, probably exterior equipment electricity energy. That's the name of it. So you, you just have to request this from the simulation if you actually want to. Uh, uh, be able to to get this out and uh, and you know process this as part of your monthly chart. You see, it automatically is always a part of the end, end use intensity. Uh, but here we go, just for the sake of um, of, uh, of due diligence, like the exact way that uh, that you can get it if uh, if you're interested in in it is to go and take this output name, use the uh, HP Custom Simulation output. Uh, and you can make sure that you plug this output name uh, into the, you know, basically into the simulation output before you go and, and pass it off uh, to the energy simulation. So, right, so I'd be connecting out our base simulation output here. And then if I were to plug this into here, which I'm not going to do because it will rerun the simulation. <laughs> uh, but that's how you can actually request this output from the simulation. And then you'll be able to import those results uh, using the... Um, uh, this what what we call it, this uh, HP read custom result component. You just need to make sure you plug that into the output name along with the SQL. So all right, that's just for your knowledge. If you if you want to be able to get the actual detailed monthly results of uh, of the electrical vehicle usage, uh, but I mean at least this allows you to see what it's like, get a snapshot of what the EV usage is like uh, in relation to the rest of your EUI. Uh, and uh, and most importantly, you get a sense of how you can actually apply these these mapper measures as part of your simulation. So all right, I'm going to leave the simulation that we finished here, finished running uh, as it is for now. Uh, in the next video, we're going to look at another uh, feature of, of the UrbanOpt uh, SDK, uh, and that will be being able to send your results uh, off uh, to uh, to the Reopt engine that will allow you to actually optimize the amount of renewables. Uh, uh, on, on this uh, on the site of, uh, of of your model using the energy simulation results that we've gotten here. Uh, so all right, so I, thank you guys for sticking it through this video, and uh, I look forward to seeing you in that next one.